and select Add New Display. We've added another display. Now this is called uh, Display 1. This is the default name. If we add another, it'll be Display 2. Let's just call this uh, Screen 2. Okay. So again, uh, we have a startup display. We click, we can see here. If we click on Screen 2, we see it here. Um, so what we need to do is create a way to jump between these two screens. Sorry, I was coughing again. Um, we need to create a way to jump between these two screens. Now, uh, as you might probably think, we can do this from the HMI using a button, or we can do it from the ladder. Uh, one thing that's nice is having control of both in the same software gives us a lot of options on how we want to function. Uh, so we can create a menu here on this screen, or we'll call it the menu screen, and give the user the ability to jump to any screen of interest, or we can use the ladder, and maybe we'll say when this input goes high, we want to force the screen, we want to force the HMI to jump to this screen. It's up to you to decide as the, as the programmer, or I guess as the, the user might demand. But uh, anyway, let's go ahead and create another button. I know we're going to be really good at buttons here. We'll put it right in the center, and we'll call it the jump button. Oops, not the jump o button. Uh, again, we're going to give it a touch property. This will be MB10. We'll call it jump button. OK. <coughs> okay. So we created one button on the startup display, and we want to link it to screen two. Now, if we look below here on the HMI, we'll notice a couple things. Uh, one is the jump condition and display. So we can link uh, individually for each a display a bit, and when that bit goes high, we'll jump to a specific uh, screen. Okay. So we just said we're going to use MB10. Again, we just click here. We bring up the select operand and address. And on the right side, we're going to select the display we want to jump to. So we know it's screen two. So let's click here. We'll select screen two. And we'll hit OK. Great. So now we've set up from our main display here. When we press the jump button, we'll jump to screen two. Now, let's take a look at screen two. We have to realize, though, that since these are local, settings, local conditions. On screen two, if we got the screen two here, we would have no way of jumping back to the main screen. So we need to create a button on screen two as well to jump back. Now, one of the nice things is uh, if we want to consider these settings that we have uh, relative to each HMI, meaning uh, we have to configure them for each screen, we can say that this is a, kind of a local variable. Uh, we have MB10 is linked to this jump button. Uh, I can use it in the next net as well. Uh, and I can show you that if we want to copy and paste or copy. We'll go to screen two. We'll hit paste. Since we know that there's nothing underneath there, we can paste onto that spot. Now, because the MB10, uh, the, the screen jump condition is uh, relative to only that screen being displayed, I can use this one. Again, remember, it's MB10. We just copied and pasted it. I can use this MB10 to jump back to the main screen as well. So we'll do that. We'll select the startup display, and we'll hit OK. Good. Now we have all this HMI real estate we can use. Uh, we're, we're only going to work with two screens in this example. If we wanted to have uh, three or four or five, we can create them just the same. Select Add New Display. Maybe we'll create more than just a jump button. We'll create a forward and back button, and we'll link the appropriate uh, bits and, and screens we want to jump through. Or we can create a menu page. Again, it's up to you to decide. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to use the second screen here. <clears throat> OK. So for this example, we're going to create a toggle function. We're going to use only one button, and we're going to control one light. So let's go ahead, and we'll draw a button here, and we'll call it. Oops, we'll call it toggle. 
<laughs> and for our touch, we'll link it to MB11. We'll call it toggle button. Uh, we'll be up to five now. Okay. And we'll hit OK. Now, we have a button. Again, it's linked to MB5. Uh, we're going to press it, and it's going to change the state of our light. So let's create a light. Again, just the red and the green. And we'll link it to light output 5. And we'll hit OK. Okay. So, again, same thing we've done with HMI now for the fifth time. We're going to go to the ladder. And let's use our comment. Light output 5. Okay. Now, we're going to use the press of a single button. So we don't have an on and off button. We're going to use just one contact. And we're going to use the positive transition contact. So I'll place it here. Uh, we're going to use this because we want to know when the button was pressed and only when it was just pressed. We don't want to continue to toggle or flip these lights on and off while the button is being pressed. We want to press it once, and then in order to turn it off or to toggle it again, you have to lift your finger and press it again. Okay. So let's link this to our toggle, MB11. And we're going to use a set and a reset coil. Uh, so I'm going to just pull those out. I'm going to place them right here. And our output was 12, MB12. A set and a reset. Okay. Now, if we take a look at this, we can maybe think for a second. We're going to have one button. And we're going to press it. And we want it to alter the state of MB12, which is the same bit. We can't set and reset at the same time. So what can we do to ensure that uh, when we press the button, it will it will alter its state. It won't just continue to set it or continue to reset it. Let me let you guys think for a second. Does anyone want to maybe type in the answer in the chat? Okay. So we're going to use the contacts and the inverted contact to determine whether we want to set or reset. Now, this is really great. The positive transition is only going to activate this network for one scan, so we don't have to worry about it flipping back and forth. So we just need to set it up to do a single shot, either the set or the reset. Now, what condition would make sense uh, for MB12 that we'd want to set it? Uh, the answer is the reset condition. So if MB12 is low, we want to set it. So we're going to go ahead and grab the inverted contact and link it to MB12. Okay. Now, if MB12 is high, we want to reset it. So let's go ahead and take the direct contact and also link it to MB12. <clears throat> and now I'll collect, connect these two separate nets in parallel. Uh, again, I can select here the connect elements, or I can just double click in the white space and I get the crosshair. And I can draw this straight up. And again, remember, we need to draw these lines to the junctions. We can't just draw them anywhere. But uh, this net now, when we press MB11, or the toggle button, if MB12 is low, we're going to enable the set. If MB12 is now high, we're going to enable the reset. So it's a nice little network. Again, these are uh, networks that are kind of legacy networks, but they still come in very handy. Uh, let's download this to the controller. <clears throat> Okay, yep, okay, the images are different. Okay, so hit the run, and now we're going to go online again. 
<coughs> we're going to bring up the remote access so we can all see it. Make it a little bigger. And first, I'm going to hit the jump button. We should see we jump to the next screen. We'll hit it again. Great. So we now know how to create more than one HMI and how to navigate through using the buttons on the HMI. Uh, we can go ahead and press the toggle button. I'm going to press it and hold it. And I press it once, and I hold down. We notice that it went from high to low. Now I'll let go, and I'll press and hold again. We notice it goes from low to high. So again, let's take a look at the network. We have the positive transition of MB11. Again, that means only when we press the button will it activate. We use the direct and inverted contacts to determine whether we want to use the set or the reset coil. Since it's high, MB12 direct contact is high. So we've enabled the reset on the next button press. So I'll press the button, and we've reset. <clears throat> now we have MB12, the inverted contact. Since the bit is low, it's going to pass to the set coil of MB12. We'll press the button one more time, and we see we've set it. Okay. So again, like our previous latch example, these are examples of uh, of uh, what, what programmers did uh, with relay programming before we had a more advanced operating system. <coughs> let's leave the online test here, and let's look at another function we have. It's a very nice function. Uh, again, let's create a toggle button and a light first. So we'll create below this another toggle. We'll just call it toggle. And we'll link it to MB13, toggle button 6. And we'll quickly create another light here. And we'll link it to a bit. Light output six. Okay. Good. So again, same setup as we had before on the HMI. We'll go back to the main routine. We'll create light output six. And again, we're going to take our positive transition of our button, which is MB13, our toggle button six. And we have a very nice <coughs> Boolean coil called the toggle coil. And we'll just place that here. And we'll link it to MB14, which is the output. Now, we've recreated in this four uh, element network, uh, the same function in this one output coil. And again, this is the, the toggle coil. Uh, again, it operates on a single scan, so we have to use a positive transition. If we held down a uh, button on the direct, the direct contact, uh, we would toggle this on every scan, and that's not what we want to do. So we want to use it just like this. So let's go ahead and download it. And we'll hit OK. Okay, and that one is completed.